Welcome to a new episode of Ain't Got Time to Read, the place where I read a story, give you a breakdown of the plot, and simply save you time. Now before we continue, here is your spoiler alert. If you have not read the story I'm about to discuss and you do plan to read it, then you may want to avoid this video or watch it at a later date. So that being said, let's dig into the plot of today's story. The story starts with Jervis Dudley recounting how he came to be in his current predicament. As a self-confessed daydreamer, he explains that when he was a child, he would read ancient texts and learn about things that normal children would not learn. At the age of ten while exploring, Jervis came across the entrance to the tomb of the Hyde family. The Hyde family lived nearby in an old mansion, and the last remaining family member burned to death in it after the house was struck by lightning. The tomb entrance was slightly ajar and heavily chained preventing Jervis from entering. He could hear somebody beckoning him to enter. Annoyed that he could not enter the tomb, he went home and promised himself that he would find some way to enter the tomb one day. For the following year, Jervis would spend several hours a day outside of the tomb, trying to find ways to get inside. It's only when reading Plutarch's lives in his attic that he realised that the time was not right for him to enter the tomb. He realised that he must grow in both strength and intelligence. While waiting for fate to allow him to enter the tomb, Jervis stopped visiting the tomb and would sneak out at night and visit cemeteries instead. Jervis refrains from explaining what he got up to during those nights, but he does indicate that he gained knowledge that others were unaware of. After a while, Jervis frequently visited the tomb again at night. He would open the tomb as much ajar as the chains would allow and sit for hours listening with his ear against it, listening to the noises of the tomb. He would then lie on the mossy ground next to the tomb and have strange dreams. He would even be awoken by old dialect coming from the tomb, and on one night he believed that he saw a light in the tomb briefly get extinguished. That same night he returned home and found a rotting chest in his attic. When opening the chest he found that it contained the key that unlocked the tomb's chains. He ventured down into the tomb and found a fresh empty coffin with a familiar name written on it. Jervis climbs into the coffin and he sleeps in it. At this point, Jervis was 21 and had waited slightly longer than a decade to enter the tomb. When returning home in the early morning, the villagers looked at him strangely. He continued to visit the tomb every night and refused to share what strange and bizarre things he got up to in the tomb at night. Over time, his mannerisms began to change, as well as the way in which he spoke. He also became unexplainably scared of fire and thunderstorms and would hide in the deepest recesses of the house whenever there was a storm. During the day, Jervis would visit the burned down mansion and even shocked a villager by showing him the mansion's cellar that had been hidden from sight and forgotten about over the years. When his parents questioned his change in personality, Jervis became more aware and used more caution to hide his visits to the tomb. Even the chain's key was hidden around his neck. One morning when leaving the tomb, Jervis was surprised to find somebody watching him. Believing that his secret was about to be exposed, Jervis was relieved to hear the man tell his parents that he had slept outside of the tomb all night. Now believing that he was being protected by some type of paranormal intervention, Jervis came and went freely to the tomb, believing that he was still protected. One night, about a week later, instead of going to the tomb, Jervis was beckoned by the dead to visit the mansion instead. It had been restored and was lit up by candles from the inside. He took advantage of the party and hedonistically did whatever he pleased within the crowd. However, when a thunderstorm started and lightning hit the mansion, a fire broke out and the mansion began to burn once again. Finding himself pinned to a seat, Jervis found that he was overwhelmingly terrified. Jervis found himself in a frenzy being held by two men. One of those men was the man that was watching him sleep outside the tomb. Jervis screams out to his dad and demands he is to be buried in the tomb. 
Javis spots a black mark on the floor where the lightning had struck and villagers find a small porcelain doll that looks like Javis with the initials JH on it. While committed to an asylum, Javis is told by his father that he and the villagers were always aware of his bizarre behaviour and that Javis had frequently been sleeping outside of the tomb with his eyes, half watching through the ajar door. He is also told that he never removed the chains and entered the tomb. Javis lost the key during the scuffle and cannot prove that he regularly entered the tomb. A servant of Jervis's named Hiram breaks the chain and enters the tomb and surprisingly does find an old empty coffin with the name Jervis written on it. Thank you for watching and if you liked the video please like and subscribe and I will see you with the next video.